Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 102, we're going to take a first look at the GU50 8 watt monoblock prototype kit amp. Wow, that was a mouthful. Okay, but first caution everyone electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, today we're going to take a first look at the GU50, our latest prototype kit amp. And after a lot of development work that started months ago with learning how to properly test the GU50 and how to figure out how to drive, drive this tube properly, and how best to wire up the power tube, we finally arrived last week with a good working circuit that sounds amazing. And Charles and I will try to describe it and talk about it after we do a quick run through of the amp itself. So eventually I'm going to do an in-depth analysis of the design for the kit amp channel, Melatone Kits. But today will just be an overview. If you want to know more about the design decisions, what makes the amp sound so great, and all that other yada yada, then stay tuned. I'll let you know when the in-depth video is available. Okay, let's have a look at the amp. Now, this is on our standard chassis, but it's starting to get close to the max. I think maybe we got a slight bit more room. What do you think, Charles? Can we stick another amp on the same chassis? <laughs> it's cutting it pretty close it's now. It's getting close. It's getting close. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's got a fairly large, let me get you on camera, power transformer. And any quality amp starts with a good transformer. And this is a big one. This is 700 volts center tapped, 127 milliamps. So for a, for a modest sized monoblock, this is a big transformer. Here's your output transformer. It's actually the same one we use on the URI, um, and the URI sounds amazing. So this had the right ratings. The, it's way overrated for the URI, but... But it's perfect for this one. Yeah, I would agree. Um, and here's a large filter cap. Now you might notice that this is bigger than our normal caps, and the reason for that is when the voltage goes up, the ratings of the capacitors go up. So these are rated for 500 volts, whereas a more common value is a 450 volt cap. Over here, we've got a simple RCA in. Your speaker outs are just back here. You can barely see them. There's a tap for a 4 ohm and an 8 ohm speaker. Here's your driver tube. This is the 6N6P. And for those that don't know, a driver tube is basically a voltage preamp tube for the power tube. It just gets the power tube up to its correct voltage range or, or required range for maximum power. And Charles, the 6N6P is an amazing Soviet tube. Yes, we've been working a lot with it here, and basically anything that we've been trying to do with it, it's been doing really well. It's a great uh, general purpose dual triode. It'll work as a voltage amplifier, which is what we're using in this case, and it will also work as a current pusher. So you could use this as a small uh, power tube. Absolutely, and you do see them being used in some output transformerless amps as well. Lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> and over here we've got the GU50. Now I know a lot of you who are into aesthetics will say the GU50 is the ugliest power tube I've ever seen, and you're probably right about that, but in a few minutes, listen to what we say about how this amp sounds. And you might just want to close your eyes when you plug this amp in because, and forget about the power tube, because aesthetics are important. Yes, the amp should look good, but this thing lights up beautifully. It lamps beautifully, and personally, I love the look of it. I don't know about you guys, but the weird stuff, I, I love the look. <laughs> I'm not really into the look, but I love the sound. It's available in quantity, it's affordable, but best of all, it's indestructible. It's indestructible, because we tried to kill them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had, to, we had to, because there's not been a lot of development work done in audio, this is a, a radio tube that goes all the way back to the German army in the Second World War. And the Soviets probably captured 
some tubes and radio equipment and simply copied the design, but they may well have captured eventually the tube plant itself and just uh, reused and recycled all the equipment. Who knows? But it's a German design from the 19, probably the late 30s. And this is essentially the Soviet copy of it. Mm -hmm. But we had a lot of learning to do because really nobody's written much about the tube. But we've got that, we've done our, we've paid our dues, we know how to test this thing properly, we know how not to blow it up, even though it doesn't seem to want to blow up. <laughs> yeah, we've done some pretty horrible things to these tubes, and they just keep on kicking. <laughs> so that's a good sign, actually. Okay, let's flip it over and see what's inside. i got to be careful because this is an all-glass base on the GU-50, so... Um, and the amp is quite heavy with that big it, power transformer. It's really heavy. I don't want to hear any cracking noises. Okay. So here you've got your power supply board. It's set up for prototyping work. So you might notice that one of the resistors is up on little, little uh, legs, and that's so that we can quickly change them out. Over here, you've got a filter uh, choke, and that large capacitor comes through a hole in the top plate, and it lands right here on the board. All this board is doing, basically, is taking your raw AC power from your your household mains, it's turning it into DC, there's your rectifiers right here, and out comes filtered clean DC power. DC power is what you find in batteries, and that's what runs pretty much all audio equipment. The signal is AC, of course. Now, you, if you're an eagle eye, you might have noticed there's an extra transformer sitting in the chassis, and this is an auxiliary filament transformer. It's 12.6 volts and it comes over here and it powers up the GU50 because the GU50 is a 12 volt power tube or 12 volt filament power tube. The 6N6P takes a 6.3 volt feed on the filament and yeah. that... So that's that we're taking right off the main transformer. That's right, like you normally would. Uh, this is not uncommon, but it's also not common. It adds a little bit of cost to the, the whole unit and a little more complication to the build, but we wanted to use the GU50, so that's your only choice. There is no 6-volt GU50. And here you have the driver board for the 6N6P. I've basically reused an existing board that we had that was suitable, and I MacGyvered in the circuit. So the actual board, Charles... Yeah, it's going to... Um well, basically, I'm going to make a dedicated board for it, and uh, it's not going to be that much different. So, uh, but, yeah. But every 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 slot will have every component will have a specific slot with it, exactly. This is one of our early universal nine pin boards, uh, but we're going to have a dedicated one just for this, which is going to be much simpler and easier to build on. Yeah, yeah. And over here, you're going to point to point wire the power tube. Power tubes don't lend themselves to uh, PCBs and unique tube designs or tube pinouts don't work well with uh, finding PCB sockets and frankly point-to-point -point wiring is the gold standard so there's just not that much circuitry here so this works really well we did the little Yuri this way as well same configuration in which we had a board for the driver and we point-to-point -point wired the power tube the big thing though is how does this sound? Could could we even describe it? We just I turned it on this morning so that we could refresh our memories for the show. If I was to say one thing, it would be like uber detail, like crazy amounts of detail. Incredible amounts of detail and clarity and I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys are getting tired of hearing these same words from us, but it just sounds um we were hearing <laughs> instrument stops. We were hearing stops, yep. We were hearing stops, but not just occasionally were we hearing stops. We were hearing stops all the time in, in the background, but very, very clear. So when you have an amp that has good drive and a great clarity, low distortion, uh, and this has all of those things, you can start to hear things in the music that are subtle... Audiophiles call them subtle cues. So they're there without the right gear. You'll never know they exist. You wouldn't even expect them to be there. Yeah, another part of the music will probably cover it up or, or muddy it a bit. But with this, we just you hear all the clarity, everything in the background. 
I like to say that if a mouse farts in the studio, you probably could hear the damn thing. You might know what it was, but um, but on top of that, instruments really sounded natural. Very natural. And that's something that uh, I've noticed with very clear sounding tubes is that sometimes they can sound a little too detailed, uh, but this didn't have that. It had the great detail, but it wasn't difficult to listen to. It, it felt like you're sitting in the studio listening to it. Yeah, so it wasn't harsh. It wasn't exaggerated, it was very balanced, and um, it sounded very natural. Yep. Very close to live. Well, we were listening to a live recording, but a lot of live recordings sound extremely flat, and this really brought it to life. So I'm excited. This week, the priority is to build a second channel, to do some serious listening tests. The next time you hear from us about the GU50, we'll probably have formal listening notes in which we can try and zero in on that sound and describe it a little bit better. Needless to say, we're both really excited that this this is probably going to become a kid amp. Yep, it took a fair bit of development work, but we're really happy with where it is right now. I think it was worth it. I don't know if I would have started on this road, though, if I knew how much time we'd be putting into it. Anyways, what came in this week? Let's clear the decks. Okay. Okay, hang on a second while I get everything out. Oh yeah, we got this amazing review. And you know I love reviews. It's let me zero in here. Zoom. <laughs> okay, there we go. Have a look at this. This is our new one of our newest products and it's becoming a bestseller. This is a miniature nine pin. So it takes the 12AX7, 12AU7, 6DJ8, you name it. All those standard nine pins. And it's made by the same manufacturer who makes our Octal socket saver lifter. And it's really designed to be a lifter. Yeah, if you have test equipment, you could use it as a socket saver. But how many? 99% of our customers, Charles, are using it as lifters. Yeah, right? exactly. And amps that have sunken tube sockets. So this makes it a lot easier for you to get your tubes out. And the way you use these lifters is you load the tube first and then you plug the whole assembly into the amp and when you pull it out you pull the whole assembly out if you can together that's in my in my amps that's how i do it it works really well but we've got a review so what is what does our reviewer say he says here the mini nine pin metal ceramic lifter is of very high quality valves and more did a fantastic job sourcing this very high level of quality as it has eluded me for years. They fit perfectly in my ship Valhalla 2 and were very easy to install. It is now so easy to roll to tube roll and I've been able to confirm with several tube sets that there is no loss in sound quality using this lifter. Great job Bells and more. Well I think that was Bob who wrote the review. Thanks Bob. I love getting reviews like this. Okay, and some really great tubes came in. So let's clear the decks again and grab some tubes. Charles, did you want to talk about the tubes? Uh, maybe a little bit. This one is probably going to stand out to you here. Oh, we're zoomed in. Let's zoom back out. Okay, so it's quite an interesting box here. You'll see mini watt which for those familiar with Philips, you'll recognize that brand, and Dario. So what is this? Well, this is a rebranded Philips EL34 for the French market. And Philips, um, a little bit of the history here real quick is that they, they had bought... Um, the, the company that they bought was... Um, Radiotronic, I believe. Yeah, La Radio, La Radio Technique. Radio Technique, that's it, yes. They had two factories in France that had, what, half the market or they something? They had something like half the market of, of tube production there, and Philips had invested in them and purchased half before World War II, and then bought all of it after the war. And the Dario brand, let's pop this guy open, is what they were branding a lot of their foreign-produced tubes that were being sold in France. And I'm sure you'll all recognize that. That is a beautiful Mullard XF2. New old stock, new, old new stock. in the box. We've got one 
quad in the store. Now, that's a pre-existing quad. I don't know if we have a second one with the Darios. They haven't actually been tested. They just came in yesterday, I think. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing like, of the, in the Yellow 34 family, the, probably the ultimate available to to find would be a Mullard XF2 new old stock, new in the box. And here's one right here. I think I make two quads a year up and they're expensive. In fact, it's the most expensive product in the store. They cost a fortune to put together, but they sound amazing. Whenever you can afford it, go new old stock. The, there is, sonically, there's usually an edge, and of course, you've got a brand new tube, so you're gonna have a long, long lifespan, hopefully. We got more 6550s. This is the original Sweat 6550C in. It's my top seller for power tubes. Everybody loves this tube. It's got the a lot of the base and drive of the KT88, and it's got the nicest mid-range of any KT88 or 6550 I've ever listened to. And they've been reliable. So these, I love vintage sweats. Svetlana made some of the best tubes ever. They're just they never got recognized. Yes, some people out there will talk glowingly about Svetlana tubes, but they really deserve to be up there with Mullards, Telefunkins, Phillips, the best of the RCAs. Sylvania. Un S Sylvania. I forgot Sylvania. <laughs> We're going to see Sylvania in a minute. So anyways, there's some more in the store finally. And not a lot, but some Sylvania 6SL7 large chrome domes came in. And these are wonderful tubes. All of the Sylvania line of 6SL7s from the very beginning in the early 40s up to the date. The, the plant closed roughly in 1982. I don't know if they made the 6SL7 to the last day. Uh, but these are warm, rich sounding tubes. There, a lot of people who own Wilsonton R8s use these or the Melts version of these. And I love these tubes. And last... But maybe not least is this little tiny RCA 12AU7. And let me see if I can get the box open here. I've got a knife. Hang on. Whenever you're trying to open a vintage box, don't pry it open. Get a knife under the edge. It's a good way to tear off the tab. Yep. And just take your time. These boxes aren't going to be made again. And reproduction boxes are awful. So forget about them. Um, these clear top RCA 12AU7s, these are wonderful sounding tubes and I had first hand experience in the in Charles's prototype kit headphone app. We, just, we were trying to figure out what will be our standard driver tube to do some of our listening tests and all of our electrical tests. So I said well let's use the RCA clear tops. They're a well loved tube and it's sort of the best of the US made 12AU7s. And wow, these things, they had a warm, rich mid range in the headphone kit amp and detail, a lovely top end. Detail and clarity, and that's part of the reason why we were testing with them for, for noise or other issues. And these just gave us everything that we needed to be able to hear. That's right, that clarity allows us to hear into the noise floor of the amp to see if we've got a problem, right? Absolutely. And yeah, and they're dead quiet. They actually test really well. So it's a good sign for a vintage tube. New old stock tubes even can have problems that are just, they go all the way back to the day they were manufactured. These tubes test really well used and new old stock. So that makes for a well manufactured tube. You know that right away when you see that. Anyways, I'm in love with these tubes. Okay, well, if you stay to the end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, we got flat rate shipping around the world of $20. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the orders, the orders ship on us. And there is a secret discount code. Some of you have found it. I'm not going to say any more because it's costing us big money. Okay, everyone, stay safe. Have fun. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone.